Alrighty, let's talk about bus bars for a second. I have the pack assembled. Well, I have it, you know, the battery's ready and in, a pa in, in, in an 18650 holder. And it's time to attach the bus bars before we begin soldering. Um, so there are different designs of bus bars and you just need to have a bus bar that is capable of the amps that you are gonna push. And remember, when you build these packs in series, the bus bars, because you're seriesing them up, the bus bars carry the voltage and the amps of the entire pack, not just of this one battery. It's going to carry the voltage and the amps of the entire pack. So you need a bus bar that is appropriate in size. Now, honestly, people overdo the bus bars, in my opinion, and everyone knows how much current these 18650s can deliver and people freak out about oh I need a big bus bar to carry all that current you just need a bus bar that's the right size for your application <laughs> this is the very first battery I ever built it's a tiny little 12 volt pack and I literally used solid copper strip and this is like $30 worth of copper strip to build my bus bars and I mean, it's a horrible little pack, but I really thought I needed solid copper strip in order to carry the current that, you know, three or four batteries in, in, in you know, parallel could supply. Um, I have obviously learned a lot since then, and I don't, I, you know, obviously I don't use solid copper strip, it's too expensive. Um, you use copper wire for your bus bars, and there's two kinds of bus bars that you can use. You can take some smaller gauge wire and you can twist it together. This is some 12 gauge and it's been twisted and you could use that as a bus bar. Um, I've, I've done this before. Um, you know, you can do two strands, maybe three strands and build a, a nice bus bar with this. But I've sort of, I've sort of moved away from this design. This, this is kind of one of the earlier designs I did. I've moved on to just pure copper um, just solid copper wire. This is pure copper annealed ground wire. This is 8 gauge. A solid 8 gauge copper wire can carry well over 100 amps easily. And so that is what I now use for my bus bars. Um, I don't, you know, I, I just, it's cheap to get. 25 feet at Home Depot is $11. Um, and and so my my whole pack will will take um, 50 feet um, obviously this is three feet right here and there's two on each side so using six feet of this per per you know battery module and there's six or seven modules so it'll take about 50 feet but you know so that's if it's eleven dollars for 25 feet that's twenty two dollars for 50 feet so you know I use I use solid copper um, now, I do like to take a little piece of sandpaper and uh, scuff it up a little bit, um, just because copper does oxi oxidize and, uh, you know, we're going to be soldering to this in a second and um, I find the solder sticks a little better if you've uh, cleaned the surface a little bit with, um, with a little piece of sandpaper just to rough it up slightly. But uh, let's go through how I attach this. First thing I do is I take a drill and I drill some holes in the pack on both sides. Here, here and a couple in the middle and at the end here because I need to feed zip ties through this pack. This pack right now, um, the only thing holding it together is tape and I'm going to obviously remove the tape in a second. But um, without the tape, the, the pack wants to come apart. Um, so the zip ties are going to hold the pack together. Um, but what are the zip ties going to clamp to? The zip ties are going to do double duty. They are also going to hold the bus bar in place. So what I do is you flip your pack on its side like this. Get your bus bars and you put them up to the sides they're going to be. Get a couple zip ties 
and you actually need to pre-feed them um, through um, before you clip them together so that you can get the bus bar in there. Okay, that's one side. Get the other side. And then you can just pull that up, position the corners over where they need to be. And uh, there you go. Now the pack is clamped together by the by the cable ties. I can snip these off. And the cable ties serve a second purpose in that they kind of act as standoff so that when I set the pack down, um, the cable tie hits the ground rather than the bus bar or the fuse wires that I'm going to use. Um, let me do a couple more and then we can flip this pack over. nearly there. Now I'll finish uh, zip tying the pack down in the other places, but already you can see that the, the, the zip ties are acting as standoffs to protect um, to protect the um, the bus bars and, and any fuse wires that are going to be soldered on here in a second. You'll also notice that I have uh, let me turn it this way. Oh, and I just did what you don't want to do and have the pack spread. And now I have to try and get these batteries back in position. There we go. Okay. Um, see the, these two wires that are coming off the front here, these are going to be the wires that I connect, um, that I use to connect the batteries together and that I use to, um, um, you know, eventually it'll, it'll also connect into the inverter and in that. I have these wires coming off, I bend them 90 degrees and um, it allows, um, you know, creates a good connection point to connect to the bus bar. Um, uh, once the once the packs are built, and I'll show you that uh, once the packs are built, I do one other thing. I usually take a piece of wire, not this, but I take another piece of this eight gauge, and I cut a piece this long and drop it in here on the bus bar and solder it in place. The reason I do that is, um, you know, the electricity is running down and around and out. And it, it just helps to uh, create an additional path of electricity to flow in um, just just so that, uh, you know, you don't want to create any sort of resistance or any uh, impediment for the flow of electricity. So by adding a second little crossbar here, you just give the electricity multiple means to escape out the front of these wires. So here is that little bus bar that I was talking about. You see the Electricity connects this row with this row over here and now with the second bus bar. Um, cut a little piece of 8 gauge the right width. Um, it's wedged in there, I've thrown a little flux on there. You take a big soldering iron. A little 60 watt soldering iron is not going to touch these bus bars. Um, you need something with a bit of power. Um, this is actually used for stained glass um, windows and is meant to melt uh, lead. So. Once this thing is hot, this thing has the juice to, um, to cause the solder to flow 
um, and connect. Um, there you go. See, that has flown beautifully. And those are um, electrically connected now. Not enough yet. Not enough yet. There we go. Those are um, beautifully connected now. Um, and uh, all it takes is a little bit of flux and a, and a heavy soldering iron.